everybody and welcome to Genthercise. This is a gentle exercise routine. It's aimed at improving or maintaining mobility, flexibility and in some cases cardiovascular fitness. Now this particular routine is level one and this is aimed at anybody who found chair-based exercise quite easy and fancies a little bit more of a challenge but perhaps needs a little bit more of assistance in terms of balance. So for that reason we have a chair. So all you need to set up for this class is an area roughly the size of this mat, some comfy clothes, some decent trainers, some water, very important, and a chair, okay? So the chair needs to be relatively sturdy, all right? We don't want anything on wheels. Um, that would really be a bit counterproductive in the balance department. So nice chair, something from the kitchen is absolutely suffice. So. All we're going to talk about now is posture. Now it's exactly the same as when you're sitting in a chair. We're going to focus everything around the chest and just gently push the chest forward so we're standing nice and tall. The next thing to think about is the belly button and we want to just gently engage the core by pulling your belly button back towards your spine so you're nice and supported in the upper body. The next thing when we're standing up is we want soft knees. That doesn't mean bent knees and it's not locked knees. So when we have straight legs like this, that is a locked knee. And a locked knee means that your muscular system isn't being used to its best capacity. We want to use our muscles as much as possible because that's what keeps us upright and keeps us nice and healthy and supported. Now, if we lock the knees out, it means bone on bone and that's not very comfortable and we're not using our muscles efficiently. So we have a soft knee and that's just where we just bring the knees slightly forward so they're not locked. Okay, so we're gonna stri go straight into our warm up now. We're gonna hold onto the chair with one hand and all I'd like you to do is roll up onto the toes. So we're coming up onto tiptoes and down. All right, nice and simple. We're just waking up the feet, waking up the muscles in the feet and the calf muscles, keeping that nice soft knee and lifting as if a piece of string is attached to our chest and it's lifting us upright. Okay, now to make that a little bit harder, all we're going to do now is roll back onto the heels as well. So keeping hold of that chair, just pull the toes up ever so slightly. Keep the soft knee, that will keep your centre of gravity in a much safer position. If you lock your knees out and roll onto your heels, you will topple backwards and we don't want that. So roll on those feet and keep a nice soft knee. Good. All right, stop there. So the next one, we don't need the chair. So we're gonna let go of the chair and we're just gonna extend the arms one at a time across the body. Now you'll notice that my knees stay facing forwards. They're not twisting with me. This is all about waking up the upper body. So we're twisting through the torso, not the knees, okay? So if you can feel movement in your feet, then you're probably twisting. So just try and correct that and try and keep your hips facing more or less forwards and focus on twisting the waist. And you can extend your arms as much as you like. So this is all about warming up the body, getting the blood flowing to all your extremities, all your muscles, so that we're in a better position to continue with the workout. Right, we're going to reach up now and slightly across the body. If this is particularly challenged and challenging, then stay in this more horizontal plane. But if not, reach up. If you're feeling extreme pain or sharp pain doing any of these exercises, then go back to the chair-based routine. Keep doing the chair-based until this is easy relatively easy because the warm-up should be easy and then uh, and then you can come on right hands to the hips and we're going to go around in a circle so you can make your circle as big as you like but please don't lean forwards try and keep that chest out and just roll the hips so allow the hips to go right round and then change direction Right, and you can go as slow as you like. 
I, t I say as slow as you like and not as fast as you like because I don't want everyone going around like this. That is not the speed we want. We want to be nice and controlled so we go around nice and gradually. Good. Okay, so the next one you have a choice. You can hold on to the chair or not. It's entirely up to you, but we're going to do a march. But it's not a quick march, it's a slow, controlled march, aiming at bringing the knee up as high as you can, or as high as your hips will allow at this stage in the game, and lifting up. Okay, so we're doing it nice and controlled. If you are doing this without the chair, then use the arms. So we're coming up and down, and then use the arms for a bit of balance. All right. If you're doing it jerky at all, then go back to holding the chair. This should be a smooth, controlled movement. No quick jerking or up and then quickly putting the foot back down. We want even spread of weight across both feet. Right, I'm going to go sideways on for the next one. So we're staying on our feet and I would advise using the chair. So I'm just going to hold on to it with one hand. You could turn the chair around if you wanted to. But all I'm going to do is bring one foot at a time up as high as I can and down. Up and down. So I'm not leaning forwards and doing this action. I'm still staying upright. I'm just pulling my heel up as close to my buttocks as I can. All right? But it's constantly moving. We're not holding it there. It's just going up and down. And it's all nice and controlled. So this is where we're just waking up the hamstrings. That's the muscle that goes right down the back of your legs. That's it. And we're staying nice and upright. So hopefully what you're seeing from the side is my ear in line with my shoulder, that's in line with my hip, that's in line with my knees. Hopefully. <laughs> I feel like it is, so I hope that is the case. I often walk, if I'm in town, which is very rare, I'm not a really a towny person, but uh, if I'm ever walking past a shop window, I kind of walk along and I get quite paranoid about my posture. I quick check to make sure everything's in line. I think that makes me quite a sad person. <laughs> All right, excellent. Come back round to the front now. And we're just going to go back into those rolls. We're just going to do this one exercise again, just to direct the attention back to the small muscles in your feet and your calf muscles. Good. So this is our warm-up. If you felt particularly exhausted, or like I said before, if you were experiencing pain, then please stop now and go back to the chair-based exercise. If, however, you're feeling energised, nice and warm and ready to go, then this is the session for you. Right, stop there. Give it a little shake. Now, the first exercise we're going to do in our routine is in the chair. So, bring that chair round and sit down. And you can take a break here if you want. I should have said at the start, feel free to stop at any point. You can pause me, stop me from waffling on and just have a bit of a chill and then come back into it if you wanted to. So, I'm going to talk through the sit to stand. Now we do this in the seated exercise routine, so if you've done that one then you'll know exactly what this is all about. And we're going to do 10 sit to stands. So, everybody please get to the front part of your chair. So you want your sit bones right at the edge of the chair. We're going to take both hands, we're going to thrust them forward, so if I just do one to demonstrate and then you can carry on, we're going to thrust the arms forwards, get the nose over the toes, stand up, reach tall, and then go down, straight back down, and do it again. If, however, you're a little bit un underconfident, rather, unsure of where your chair is, then please feel free, when you come to sit back down again, just reach back with a hand and sit down. So just use your fingertips to tell yourself where the chair is. Right, let's go. So we're going to do one and down, okay? I say ten, but this is all down to you. If you do five, nice and slow and controlled, because that's the level you're at, then just do five. You don't need to do ten. Don't get left behind, okay? We will have plenty of rest breaks, so you can go at your own level. Keeping that head forward, and remember to get your nose over your toes, and use the arms to help give you that forward momentum and that stops you then trying to stand up from your heels. So if you stand up through your heels all your weight goes backwards which is why it's so much harder to stand up. The nose over toes principle means that your weight comes forwards into the balls of the feet 
so that you can stand up using your muscles much more efficiently. Right, sit down. Take a rebreather, that's very good. Right, we're going to come now up onto our feet and we're going to do some tiptoes like we did at the start, but we're going to do it with a little bit more control. So everybody up, come around the side of your chair. Now you don't have to use the chair, if you prefer not to, then just let, let it go, but always have it there, it just has a little bit of a confidence boost. And we're going to come up and we're going to hold that pose. So lift the chest and then slowly lower down. So we're controlling the way down. We're not dropping. Up, nice and controlled, and down. Sit. So that chair is quite useful when we're up on our tiptoes. Equally, if this is really challenging in the balance department, then you could get behind the chair and just hold the chair from behind. Sit, up, and down. Okay, so we've got at no speed here. We should be challenging the calf muscles and then letting them rest in between. And up. Good. All right, release that off. Now the next one you could do sitting down if you wanted to or stay up, but we're just doing boxing. So you don't need the chair to hold on to and we're just going to allow the arms to punch forwards and backwards so we're nice and loose. And you go at your own speed. This is when we're going to loosen up the arms and just build up the, uh, the speed a little bit so that your heart is working a little bit more and just increases your breathing rate. That's it. Turn it now into a double punch. So we're going forwards and back, forwards and back. So the elbow is coming right back to the chest and we're not doing this action. I'll go sideways on, we're not doing this. Right, the elbows are coming forwards and back. One, two. One, two. Okay, and you're doing this with nice soft knees. So we've got a little bit of a bounce if you can. Not too much. We're not dipping down or anything like that. That's it. Good. And we're going to sit back down. Right, so we're going to repeat that set. So get to the front part of your chair. Sit up nice and tall and take a big deep breath. So throughout our next set, I'd like you to focus on your breathing and make sure when you're doing the exercises that you're taking nice big deep breaths in and then deep breaths out. And we're pushing the air out, so we're using our lungs to a much greater capacity rather than potentially trickle breathing, which is often what happens when we're first starting to do something. So sit to stands, reaching up. You don't have to reach up if you don't want to. If you've got any shoulder restrictions, then just take the arms up as high as they will allow and sit back down again. And remember to lift your chest. And down. And if you need to reach back just to make sure the chair is there, then do so. That's purely psychological. As long as you haven't moved your feet, your chair is definitely where you left it. So as long as you stick your butt out as far as you can, it will be there. But it always helps just to have that warm, fuzzy feeling to know that it is in fact where you think it is. Sit. Now I like these exercises. They're a good test so that if you're ever out and you're using a public toilet, that you know you can hover over the top of them. You can control the way down, potentially stay there for a little bit and then stand back up again, if need be. <laughs> That's what we're building up to. So level two, we go into that, where we're doing squats without the chair and doing a little bit of hovering by level three. Sit, all right, stop there. So we're gonna get back to our feet now and stand up to the side of the chair. I'm just gonna move my chair across a little bit so I've got a little bit more space. Right, holding onto the chair with one hand, if you wish, remember you don't have to, but we're coming up onto tiptoes, holding the pose, and then slowly lower down. That's it. Nice soft knees. Probably can't tell that my knees are soft because I'm wearing all black today. That's it. And up. And down. So this control is really important. The more we work, the muscles in the feet and the calf 
the more signals go to your brain. And those signals help your body know, or help your brain know, where your body is and what it's doing. And uh, that's what we call proprioception. So you may have heard that mentioned before by physios or doctors, and that's the, that's the principle that your, of, your mind, of your brain rather that is, uh, is controlling your balance and controlling how your body is moving uh, in response to things that are going on, in response to stimulus. So the more signals that go to your brain from around your body, the better. That's good. One more. Up and down. Good. Right, either sit back in your chair or stay upright. Nice soft knees and back into the boxing. So if there's anyone that's particularly annoyed you this week, then stick them in front. And you can increase your, uh, your aggression now if you wanted to. Give it some welly. But don't worry. <laughs> if you've got any sort of arthritis or anything in your shoulder, then maybe, uh, maybe hold the thought. Do it in, uh, in spirit rather than in practice. Okay, so if going upwards was painful last time, then stay to the front. If not, take it up. This was in the warm up, wasn't it? Good. Back to the front again, and we're going to go into a double punch. So back to that double punch, taking the elbow back, forwards and back. So this should get your heart rate up a little bit now. We should be breathing a little bit more quickly. Not lots though. We don't want to be exhausted. This is all about mobility. And in order to improve mobility, we have to do things at a slightly submaximal level. So we don't want the heart going out of control. And stay nice and comfortable. Set. Marvellous job. Okay, give it a flick out. Right, we're going to go into slow marching now. So we're going to hold onto the chair. And we're going to go back into that warm-up exercise where we brought one leg up slowly and then up with the other one. And we're going to focus more on the technique now and the speed at which you're doing it. So the longer you leave one leg down on its own, obviously the harder it's going to be working. So if you're lifting your knee up and holding it a little bit longer, that's going to challenge that balance. And the way you make this harder is by just releasing the pressure on your hands. So if you're leaning quite heavily on a chair right now, all right, I'd like you to try and release off that pressure if you can, and just go to a grip. So we go to a finger grip. So we go from leaning with the palm to holding with the fingers. And we call this dirty fingers, clean palm. So here we've got a dirty palm, you see. So here we've got dirty fingers and a clean palm. And then the next grade up from that is just going to fingertips. So we just have the First and, first and second finger just balanced on the chair and it's just there as a little bit of assistance. So you guys can choose which level you're at. Of course, if you don't want that at all, then do it without. In which case, I probably suggest you should go on to level two. Because that's where we look more into balance without using the chair. All right. We're going to get rid of the chair now because we're going to go on all fours, so we need a little bit more space. So I'm going to put my chair over there and I'm coming down on all fours. So we're going to get into this position so that the shoulder is over the wrists and we're just going to roll upwards. That's it. So you see how my spine arcs upwards, my head comes down and we're lifting the belly button. So imagine you've got a tail and it's tucking underneath. And then go down, tail goes up in the air, and we arc the spine downwards. So we get this curve effect down, and then curve effect up. And really feel like you're tucking your tailbone under. So you're getting your tail around and you're trying to touch your belly button with the tip of your tail. And that engages what we call your transverse abs. And that muscle, really important, makes up a major part of your core stability. And if it's weak, you then lose that support mechanism you've got in your, for your spine. So we want to really challenge the transverse abs. It's a bit right down the bottom, so we're zipping ourselves up and down. OK, 
Okay, so we're going to add in a bit of extra now. So as we lift the spine up, I want you to bring your knee, or one of your knees rather, into your chest. So we're going to bring the knee in, and then down, and round the spine. Then we're going to go onto the other leg. So we lift the back, knee into the chest, and down, and round the spine. Up, tailbone under, knee to chest, and down, round the spine. Lift up, tailbone under, other knee to chest, and down. And we're going to do this two more times. So round the spine down, up, tailbone under, knee to chest, and down, change sides, up, knee to chest, and down. Good. All right, now everybody lie on your front, and we're going into what's called half cobra. So that's where we have the elbows down, and they're directly below your shoulders. So we should all be able to get into this position. Okay, just for those that were interested, a full cobra is with the hands down and the arms straight. But that's level two, level three. Okay, we're looking at potentially having lower back stiffness restrictions. So at this level, so we're going to do this with our elbows down. Now, what we're going to do is look over one shoulder. So I'm picking my left shoulder first and I'm going to lift my left foot. And I'm just going to look round and see if I can look at my heel. Then I'm going to lower it down and go to the other side. So I'm now looking over my right shoulder at my right heel and then down. And we're just going to go backwards and forwards nice and fluidly between left foot and right foot. And you should feel this in your lower back. It shouldn't be a sharp pain. We want to liberate the spine, not hurt it. But if it's a uh, mild discomfort, then that's probably okay, because that's going to be your spine just releasing off. If you struggle with this move, and perhaps maybe get cramp in your hamstrings, then just lift gently, so you don't have to lift your foot all the way up. You could just lift it a little bit, look over your shoulder, and then go to the other side. What we're doing is creating a nice fluid movement for the spine. And it's really effective in just releasing it off. Good, stop there. Right, everybody now up into supermen. So we're coming up onto all fours. I'm just going to pull my leggings up here. They have a habit of slipping down. There we go. Don't want to be uncouth now. <laughs> so supermen, we do this on all fours. So again, shoulder directly above the wrist. And we're going to lift the right arm with the left leg. So what I would advise you do to start off with is do one of each. So we're going up and down, up and down, and then lift one leg and down, and then the other leg. Any difficulty with that, just continue in that same routine. So I wouldn't push the Superman if you were struggling with that one. If, however, you found that quite easy, we're now going to try and lift the right arm with the left leg. So we're coming up into this Superman style position and then lower it down. We're going to go really slowly up with the left arm and the right leg and then slowly down. And I would strongly advise fixing your eyes on something on the ground in between your hands and that just helps your balance. That's it. And then switch sides. Arms down. Up with the other one. Good. And down. One more time. Up. And down. Change sides. When I said one more time, I went one more time on both arms. <laughs> I tend to do that, sorry. And release it down. Good. If you can, just sit back onto your knees 
and give your arms a little bit of, bit of a flick out. If that's a problem, then just lie on your front and just release the fingertips out. Okay? That's really good. Well done. So we're going to lie on our backs now. And we're just going to take a few moments, just take a little bit of a breather. <sighs> okay, so we're going to do now what's called a half sit. Or half sit up. So it's sitting up, but not all the way. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to slide both hands gently up the thighs, aiming for the knees, and then slowly lower back down. Okay, and when we come back down, we'll take a breath. Okay, so we're going to give our abs plenty of time to recover and then go again. So it's up and down. That's good. I love how I'm just congratulating myself there. <laughs> I'm so used to having people in front of me. It's a very strange world we live in where I'm teaching uh, a punch bag and, uh, and a cushion <laughs> how to do sit-ups. Sit. And up. And down. So this is all about control. Now focus on your breathing now. We take a, take a big deep breath. And exhale on the way up. Inhale on the way down. Exhale on the way up. Inhale on the way down. And exhale on the way up. And relax all the way down. Great stuff. Nice. Well done. Now, everybody roll over onto your side. And you can either support your head with your hands or just lie flat, whichever is most comfortable for you. And I'd like to get... Can you see my feet there? I'm going to move my chair a little bit further out of the way. There we go. Should be able to see me now. Now, see how my body is in a straight line. I want you to now bring your feet, both feet, back behind your bum. All right, so you've got your feet as far back as they, as they, as they can. Sorry, I'm just putting my t-shirt down there. Now, we're going to leave our feet together. So keep your heels together, and we're just going to lift the top knee. So we're just going to come up and down, nice and steady. Up and down. So what ha often happens is as we lift the knee, we roll backwards. And I would like you to try and stop that. So if we put our hands on our hip here and just give it a little bit of pressure, just to keep it in line. If you can't do that, then just try and actively push your hips ever so slightly forwards. And that then targets the right muscle, which is right in our pelvis up here. And that muscle we're targeting there is a really important muscle for stabilising your knees. So it's a really good one to challenge. But we want to do this smoothly. So what I, what I often see is the knee comes up and then we get this jerkiness on the way down. Or likewise going upwards as well. This jerky effect. And that's where the muscle isn't engaging properly. So the way you will improve that is just by doing it. So the more you do, the better i.e. every day, I don't mean that now. Um, we're going to stop there, and we're going to roll over onto the other side. So I'm just going to roll straight over, hopefully not revealing myself too much, but here we go. So body nice and straight, feet back as far as they'll go, and we'll put the hand on the hip, on the hip. and then lift, top knee, and down. So a bit of a test, if you can get your knee all the way up to the ceiling, the chances are you're rolling backwards, because not many hips will go at that angle if they're in the correct position. So if you're uh, enabling your knee to come up like this, then you're rolling too much. So keep your hips forwards and lift up and down, keeping this pelvis all in the same place. I know I keep... Um, reiterating that, but it's very, very common to roll the pelvis back. And all it, that does then, if you do it by rolling, you're then using bigger muscles, not the muscle you're trying to target. And we've already used those muscles today, so we don't need to work them anymore. That's it. 
And remember, we're looking for smooth movement, not jerky. Crack in. All right, relax there and roll back onto your backs. Now, that's the bulk of the exercises done now. So we're going to go into some stretches. So to start off, put one leg straight to the floor and bring the other knee in towards your chest. And all I want you to try and do is interlock your fingers around your knee and pull the knee in towards your chest. Right? You don't need your head up. Let that relax. Let your neck relax. And just look for the stretch, possibly around here. You might get it in your inside thigh, um, whichever or well, wherever you need it. Sit. And release that leg off, send it back down to the floor. And bring the other knee in. And pull that knee in. Good. So we're going to do quite a dynamic stretch now. We're going to put the arms out to the side, lift both knees, up to the front if you can and push your belly button down into the floor and what I'd like you to do is just roll both knees over to one side and try and get them all the way down to the floor and if you can do it with your knees together and in this position we should have the shoulders still in contact with the floor and we're going to hold this position and look over the back shoulder and just hold it there and we should get a lovely stretch in the spine and down these oblique muscles down the side. All right? It's a really good flexibility stretch for the spine. Now, to get the legs to the other side, we're going to do this in one movement. So I want you to engage your core. So pull your belly button back towards your spine. You can use your arms for a bit of push and just lift the knees. Roll to the other side. Knees together shoulders down and look the other way so i'm now looking back over my other shoulder and just hold it there so i get my stretch band back here let's put my t-shirt down that's it see this is why leotards were invented <laughs> if you think i'm wearing a leotard you've got another thing coming Ah, uh ah, -uh, i have limits <laughs> just about happy wearing lycra Ugh. <laughs> right, push your belly button in and bring the knees back up to the middle and we're just going to let the feet come down. Now, I'd like you all to come up onto one knee now, please. So roll over. Take your time if you've got any lower back restrictions right now. All right, and we're just going to bring one foot up to the front. So, if you struggle with your knees, please go and grab yourself, grab yourself a cushion or a, a hoodie or something just to put under the bottom knee and it will just protect the, uh, the front of that knee. Now, in this position we're going to lean forwards or lunge forwards and squeeze our buttocks and what we're looking for is a bit of a stretch down this part of your body. So you've got top part of your thigh into the front part of your pelvis. And that's what we call your hip flexors. So by squeezing your buttocks, that just creates a bit more of a dynamic effect on that, on that muscle and on that stretch. And now, if you can, take the arms up to the ceiling. That's good. All right, bring the arms down. Just bring the weight backwards onto that knee again and we're gonna straighten that top leg. So we want that leg as straight as we possibly can. Get your balance by leaning down and see if you can grab hold, or grab hold, or see if you can um, touch the floor and you can just anchor yourself out with your hands. If you struggle in this position, you could bring both hands round to the side, but try not to go all the way round to the side because that will change the stretch altogether. So try and keep your hands as close to your leg as you can but leaning over the top. Now, if you struggle in this position, then go back to how we did it in the chair, doing the chair-based exercise stretches at the end on the edge of your chair. But hopefully everybody will be in this position. All right, pull the toe back towards you. And that will then just stretch the top of the calf muscle. And release 
release it off. So lift through the chest, take that foot back and change sides. So we should have that cushion under your knee if you wish. If you've got really thick pile carpet though, then I'm sure you'll be fine. But lunge it forwards, give your butt a good squeeze. And then when you're ready, take the arms up. Good. All right, release that off. Roll back, extend that front leg and gently lean over the top, aiming to touch the floor with both hands. Again, if you struggle with getting this hand to the outside of your leg, then feel free to bring it to the inside. And that just makes it a little bit easier. To hold that position, whilst most of you are in that position, if you did struggle with the hamstring stretch, I'll just talk you through it very, very briefly. So I'll give sideways on. So we want to get the front of our chairs here, leg out straight, other leg bent, and lean over the top. Oh, yeah. There we go. So we've got a nice relaxed ankle, straight leg, and lean. And that's where we want the stretch, is around the back of the leg. All right, and then it would be a case of pulling the toe back up towards you like so. Okay, so if you're in that category, then please feel free to continue using the chair. But from where else we were in this position. That's it. Okay, release it off. And we're going to lie all the way down. So lie on your front. And just relax for a few moments. Try not to go to sleep just yet. We've just got a couple more to do. And the first one we're going to do is just bringing the feet in towards your bum. Okay, so we're not reaching round just yet. However, if you can reach round and grab hold of your laces, excellent. That's it, you just grab the laces and pull the heel into your bottom. But that's actually quite challenging for the shoulder and for the chest and for anyone with any spinal restrictions or tight thighs. So if you're in that latter category, just do it this way, okay? So you can just squeeze your butt as you lift your foot and your target is to get the heel as high up as you can. That's it. Good. All right, last one now. We're gonna come up into that half cobra again. Take a big deep breath. And exhale. And up, I mean in and out. Good. Take your hands now to the floor and we're just going to push gently up if you can and sit back on our heels. I'm just going to come forward a little bit. So try and get back as far as you can. If your bum's in the air then that's absolutely fine but we're going to come down as low as we can and just do the counter pose for that stretch. Or if you're back on your sit bones, grand. And then slide it forwards, lie right back down again, onto your back. That's it. And all we're going to do now is let the legs go out to the, out to the front, let them lie completely comfortably so the ankle joint is completely free, so the knee joint is free and it's comfortable. Take a big deep breath. And on the exhale, let the arms just go out to the side, wherever they want to lie. So if they're lying face up, they're face up. If they're face down, they're face down. Wherever your arms feel like they want to lie, just let them relax down and make sure there's no tension in your neck. So see if you can free up your neck and just roll left and right. And for the next five minutes, I want you to lie in this position and just enjoy the peace and quiet. So we're going to take a big deep breath and on the exhale imagine you are somewhere where you are totally at peace, somewhere that you've been on holiday perhaps or a place you can 
remember where you just felt completely and utterly relaxed, where nobody was around to stress you out. And we're just going to lie here nice and peacefully. And I will say now, thank you very much for today. I'm going to leave you to lie as long as you wish. And I will see you again for some more tomorrow. If, however, you found today really easy, I would suggest you look at level two. But if not, then carry on with level one until you find yourself at that point. Thank you ever so much, everybody. And relax.